you come together and you and you go apart and it's just that's that's how it is in marriage mm-hmm. and for re- any relationship yeah. not even just marriage mm-hmm. it's like you know that that saying that they say you just know i was like well yeah there's some potential here take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate a dream of transforming relationships as we know it and 20 years later we give you power couple dr ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Check us out online at couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experiences with working with thousands of couples for over 15 years. You know, every day we get to hear intimate details about a couple's celebrations, disappointments, and everyday challenges. We've often wished these stories were shared because we know we are more similar than different. And so we've created not only an avenue where you can hear people's intimate lives, but an atmosphere where people come over to our home pub for a drink and share their stories. And today we have very special guests. We have Gina Gonzalez and her husband, Leo, joining us today. Hello. 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 Welcome, Hello. guys. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Some of you out there, some of you listeners might not know that Gina is a musician and she recorded our intro, which is entitled Just Breathe. That's right. Breathe, mm-hmm. and, breathe and let go. Breathe and breathe let and go. Let go. And she also did the voiceover too, as well. So this is very, uh, very exciting for Gene and I to have you guys on the podcast today. Well, we're happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yes. And the topic we're going to be talking about today is having a relationship with a musician. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yep. But before we get to that, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? How old are you? How long you've been together? All right. Well, I am about to be 44. I have a birthday coming up on Saturday. Happy birthday. Thank you. And I've been doing music for 20 something years. I started when I was 17, right out of high school. I mean, I did musicals and stuff in high school, but Mm -hmm. I joined a band in college, my first college and kind of got bitten by the music bug. Ended up moving out to Boston and did music out there. And it's kind of been my path ever since. I always say it didn't, I didn't choose to do this. It kind of chose me. So it was a calling. It was a calling. Absolutely. That's awesome. So. How, how about you, Leah? Me, I'm 48, blue collar guy, working at UPS for the last 28 years or so, hoping to retire in the next five. So that's about it. Great. Can you guys tell us the story of how you met? He keeps pointing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want to talk. You, well, I do want to talk, but you tell the story a little better. This is back in 2009, and I was living in Palatine at the time, and my friend had said, why don't you go on this de- dating website, this fitness singles dating website? And I had kind of like sworn off relationships. I'm like, I don't really want to get into one right now. And she's like, oh, it's just for fun. You know, check it out and see if you meet somebody, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. So I went ahead and signed up and only did like a, a month. I was like, I'm only doing this for a month. And Leo had actually looked at my profile and I saw his picture and I was like, mm, he's kind of you know good looking guy. And so I sent him a message and he never responded. And I was like, well, that's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> there was a reason I did not respond. I could not respond because I was not a paid subscriber. Oh, so you like could, the free trial? Yeah, it was a yeah. free trial. And uh, you could actually look at profiles, but you couldn't communicate until mm. you actually signed up. So you up. had to pay to play. Mm. Do you yes. remember what the message was? It was just, I really don't remember exactly, but pretty basic. I'm sure like, hey... How's it going? My name's Gina. I I basically said, you know, I saw that you looked at my profile. So I'm just reaching out and, you know, seeing if you're interested and, you know, getting a drink or something like that, you know, and then I got nothing. So, well, I had (laughs) crickets uh, and it wasn't intentional. I I had planned on signing up just, you know, I wasn't in a rush, just like you, you weren't in a rush to uh, get in a relationship. So I had come home from work on a Friday night. And went ahead and checked to see who was looking at my profile. And I saw that Gina had sent me an email, but I couldn't read it. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to sign up. You know, maybe I'll sign up 
tonight, tomorrow, you know, what's the rush? Didn't want to look desperate. And as I was online, she could see that I was online. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I think she was, I think she was taking a break at a gig. If I was, yeah. Or I was getting ready to go to a, I was hanging out somewhere and I was getting ready to go to a gig and I was like, What's up with this guy? Uh, <laughs> Look at this okay. creeper. <laughs> he's, he's online and he's not even, you know, play, I acknowledging. Was play, I was playing the game. Playing, playing the, the game. game. The game you play. It's you know, for games. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I almost so, lost. Well, well <laughs> no, because. I actually emailed him again. Right. And I was like, right listen, then dude. And, there. and then I was like, whoa, where's the credit card? I better sign up because this. This girl's hot to trot, I think. So <laughs> that's right. You know, so I actually brought signed, to you by fitnesssingles.com. That's right. Yeah. Is it still working? I is, wonder if it's yeah. still in, in business. By the way, this is no no endorsement for fitnesssingles.com yeah, so, for no, all you. But no. uh, so I signed up and I was like, all right, do I sign up for a month or do I sign up for six months? Six months was a better deal. I think it came out to uh, $10 a month. Always versus, looking for the better deal. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, 30 days versus, you know, six months. I'm like, sure. Might as well sign up for six months. So I signed up for six months. And how did that go for you? After we met, her subscription expired and she saw that I still had mine. And she's like, hey, you know, uh, I see you're still on fitness singles. How long is that going to go on for? I'm like, are you asking me to cancel my subscription? And she said, no, but I'm not on it anymore. So I took that as, yeah, maybe you should cancel. So no, I'm just wondering where where this was headed. Are we, are we free <laughs> to far, see other people? Well, how far into here? the relationship was that? A month? A month. About a okay. month. Yeah. Right after hers expired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up canceling and threw four months out the window. It all worked out in the end. Yeah. It was I would worth say. It. It no, was no, totally regrets. Worth it. no regrets. Yeah. 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 No regrets. No regrets. It wasn't like I was still going on the site. I just kind of had it and it was like, you know. Just in case we fell through. Yeah, it was on the back burner. Right. It's a backup plan. It's on the back burner. You never know. <laughs> is, this pattern, is this a pattern that continues in your guys' relationship where you kind of have to nudge him a couple times to... Absolutely. Because <laughs> they say that when you first meet, whoever approaches who is kind of how the relationship goes. Some, yeah. Sometimes I need a fire lit under my ass. I don't know. <laughs> and I've learned over the years how to light that fire because, you know, there's... There's ways to approach situations. And I learned from my parents. I mean, my mom and my dad have a very interesting dynamic in their relationship. She's a lot younger than my dad is. And she knows how my dad can be. And she's really good at handling him. So I, I feel like I've learned over the years how to kind of persuade him to do mm. things that I think are important. Of course, pick your battles as we always do. But what is their you know, age difference? 16 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty significant. That's a big were they older when they had you? Yes. One of them was for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, my dad was 48, maybe. Okay. I'm trying to think. He's 92. So and I'm 40. I'll be 44. So that's got to be, I don't know. I can't do the math right now. Who's got to calculate? 48. Yeah, 48. Yeah, 48. So yeah, he was, he was older. Yeah. So. What was it about the other person you fell in love with? Why don't you start, honey? A lot of things. I mean, I felt that we were very similar. From our first date, I knew there was some connections that could lead to long term. You know, that, that saying that they say you just know, I was like, well, yeah, there's some potential here. What was it about her? That you uh, I think our upbringing, similar backgrounds. I don't know. There was just a connection. It's hard to describe, but you guys may know yourself. I don't know if you have a similar, <laughs> but it was easy. It was, was just it different easy. than other people that you had dated. I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. So we, we hear that like when someone knows it's, they kind of know, is this your guys both first marriage? Yes. yes. Okay. First marriage. I mean, I considered it a few times, but I was like, eh, never really met. They couldn't get that fire going. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was only a, a temporary fire and it got put out several times. And Gina's got a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> Even internal flame. <laughs> oh, it never stops burning. No. Yeah, so. But no, I mean, it was honestly, it was easy. I mean, I don't know if you feel the same way. But yeah, I, I mean, think, you know, I had been in a couple of relationships over the last, you know, the 10 years before I had met him. And, you know, you just know when things are not working out. And then so you go, OK, well, this is definitely what I don't want. And I feel like I did a lot of that before I met him, where I kind of weeded out the things that I 
that I didn't want in my relationships. And when I met him, the first thing I, I, one of the things I did want was somebody who was able to communicate and, and, you know, kind of entertain themselves and talk to people. And, you know, because of if what I do in my background, I need somebody who's self-sufficient, who can kind of do their, you know, do their own thing while I'm performing. One of the first things I noticed when he walked in, um, we met at a Starbucks in Palatine. <clears throat> One of the first things I, I noticed when he walked in is that he struck up a conversation with the girl behind the counter and was like so generous and nice and kind. And that took me immediately. Like that was one of the first things that I noticed. And he loves to talk. Everybody who knows him knows he loves to talk. And it's so much nicer to have that than the opposite of somebody who doesn't know how to open up or communicate. Or, Especially you know. when you're working. Right. And that's how we met you guys. Right? Yeah. yeah. We, we heard you play and then we met you and you chat, yeah. chatted with us. Chatted. Chat, 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 right. chat, chat, chat. <laughs> how long have you guys been together? Uh, nine years. Yeah. Nine Two, 10 years in May. 2000. Yeah. How, how did you guys know you were a couple? I think after a couple dates, we both got along so well. I think our first date was seven hours. Wow. Where'd you guys go? What'd you do? So we had agreed to meet at, at Starbucks for coffee and it, and we are both fisher people. So it was like one of those things where we said, we'll throw our fishing poles in the trunk or in the you know back of our cars. And if, if the coffee part of it goes well, then we'll, maybe we'll go fishing. We'll that was something. pre-planned. It was because, wow. you know, when you get to a certain age, you don't want to waste time. time. Mm -hmm. you're, it's like, you know, within the first, yeah. you know, 30 minutes to an hour, if mm -hmm. you're sitting there talking to somebody, if there's a spark or there's not, if right. there's not, why are we going to bother going anywhere or getting dinner or, get, you know, when, you know, we're both pretty realistic. Yeah. Uh, we, we usually encourage people to do an activity, not just sit and interview each other. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So it, you guys... Obviously went fishing. We did. And <laughs> two places. Yeah. We ended up doing set like basically seven hours. So we fished one pond, we got lunch and then we fished another pond and then I had to go. So yeah, it was, it was a long first date. I left to go to, to, where did I go? You had a gig in the city. No, when I, the first, after the first month that we were dating. Japan. A Japan. Mm -hmm. I left to go to Japan. So we were apart for oh, two weeks. And I kept in contact with him when I was overseas. So there was a majority of our, you know, first encounter that we weren't even together. And we were kind of just talking. She was checking up on me. I was not. Because <laughs> I still had feel, my fitness singles no. subscription. And she. Do you feel that that kind of helped you bond on a different level than yes. you would if you were in the same space? Absolutely. And I think that that's kind of been the precursor to our entire relationship. We don't spend a ton of time together because our schedules don't match up. Mm -hmm. He works Monday through mm -hmm. Friday. I work, you know, Thursday through Saturday, Sunday. sometimes Sundays, sometimes Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. So when we do get to spend time together, it's, we try to make it quality time, you know, and I think it does help a relationship, you know, towards the end, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I think that that does make it stronger for us well, not to be oversaturated. When we first met, she's like, boy, you work a lot. And I was like, well, when I retire, you're going to have plenty of time to spend with me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going you're gonna to be wishing that I had a job. But uh, How much quality time would you both say you spend? And quality time is just the two of you, no screens, right? Just interacting. Very little. In a week. In a week. In a week. I would say yeah. a couple hours, a couple hours a week. A couple hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that. Yeah. I don't know. It's usually during the summer. It's fishing if we're we're on the boat. Boating, fishing, mm -hmm. right? That I would call that quality time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're funny because we, when we're at home and we're doing our own things, we're still together. Like we'll be in the living room together. The TV's on. There's music. We have spa channel music that we play in the background pretty much twenty four seven. It's neither of us are huge TV people. I mean, we I have my shows that I like to watch on certain times, but a majority of it is just music that's playing calm, relaxing music. And like so, sanctuary. yeah, we just kind of hang out and, you know, even though we're still doing our own things, we're still together and we're, we talk and, you know. We try to do date night once a month, but 
with her schedule, it's not easy. It can be, tr- it can be tricky. Yeah. yeah. It's not easy. I imagine. How long did you guys date before getting engaged? Go ahead, Leo. This is a good story. So let's see here. We've been married. We've been married five years. We met. I think we were in. Did we? It was a one-year engagement. I think it was. Yeah. So we were dating for three years, four years, four years, and she was putting the pressure on, lighting that fire again. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, things are fine. Good things come to those who wait. What's the rush? You know. I mean, we were already living together. She moved in about a month after we started dating. Yeah, I would say about a month. So yeah. before or after Japan? I think it was after. after. Okay. Yeah. yeah, definitely after. How did that decision be made, was made? Uh, it was a financial decision. I was paying $1,000 in rent. and thought it was 1500 No, it was $1,000. Okay. And I had about $8,000 worth of debt. And he's like, you know, you could be taking that $1,000 and putting it towards your debt and have that paid off in eight months. He goes, I don't have a mortgage. So you wouldn't have to pay anything if you moved in with me. Split if, the bills. Yeah, it split the bills. If it doesn't work out, then at least you're debt free and you can, you know, move on and get get your own place and all that stuff. And The relationship was heading in the right direction. I mean, I felt good about it. And again, it was, I don't want to say it was a test, but I mean, well, living, living with somebody, you really get to know them. Mm-hmm. And once again, when you're older, you don't. You know, you look at things, I think, a little bit differently than if you were in your 20s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're in your upper 30s, you're like, all right, how much, you know. Almost 40. Yeah. Which he was, almost yeah. like, I didn't make her cut off for, she was dating younger guys, I, I think, was. at the time. <laughs> yes. And her friend told her to bump up the age parameters. Date up. Uh, <laughs> five years. And she's like, 40. Oh my, that's oh my so God, old. And I wasn't so even 40. <laughs> he was 39. I was 39. So I just made the cut off. just made it. Luckily. <laughs> So, but again, I was like, if I, if finances weren't an issue, would you have gotten to the same place? I don't even know if the finances were an issue. I think it was him trying to be helpful. Yeah. Being, being just nice. Just the way I am. How he is. I mean, I was like, wow, that's, you're paying all this money to, you know, the credit card companies Mm -hmm. and nobody's going to win on that except them. Yeah. But you weren't thinking like, great, I'll live with him for eight months, get out of debt and then leave. No, that was not my intention at all. I think that we, regardless, I think we, it would have moved in that direction anyway. Mm-hmm. And she right away just started paying down that debt and yeah, I, kept I, her I, word. And I was like, okay, this This is where pretty. I think the test comes in. He, in his UPS buddies experiences, you know, they, there's a lot, the divorce rate in UPS is very high. Mm. No, that's interesting. interesting. And long hours. Long, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's not an easy. I don't know what the percentage is, but I've seen a lot of coworkers get divorced. I mean, I work with a lot of guys, mm-hmm. but. And work is the factor. I mean, it and, probably yeah, factors yeah, in. Yeah. I don't think it's a hundred percent, but you know. But he's seen, you know, the dark side of that where are they, the wives don't work or they don't, you know, they end up taking half the pension or, you know, and that's something that scared the crap out of them. You know, one of the very first questions he asked me when we started, when we went on our first date was, how do you feel about a prenup? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know if that was on the first so date. The was opening it? question. Definitely. <laughs> on I the think first the date. opening question was one of them was kids. That was, yeah, we both we talked about that, but uh, yeah. what, what, what was that conversation? He said, do you want kids? And I said, you know, I'm, I'm not sold on them. It's kind of one of those things. And I'm an, a unique person. I know that I could take them or leave them. It's not that I don't love kids. I just never really, you know, with my career, I, I, it's not something that I was focused on. I was more focused on traveling and mm-hmm. playing music. And so when he said, you know, I don't know if I really want kids, I said, that's, that's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, it's not a deal breaker for me. So me neither. And it was one of those things where we kind of went in and said, listen, if it happens, it happens. We step up. We're going to be wonderful parents. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We're not going to go out of our way to try to make it happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I have friends that So you didn't prevent and you didn't nope, try. We didn't do anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just kind of left it to the, to the heavens above to make the decision and nothing ever happened so far. So it's all right. 
you know, mm-hmm. accept whatever Keep it telling is. her, give me one shot. I said, I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be retired soon. I could be the stay-at-home dad. And, sure. You know, you could still concentrate. I think part of it was her career, oh, the, the nights, a lot of the nights. Yeah, it's just and really Yeah, it just... It's but, definitely a game changer. Yeah, so when it came to, you know, the finances part of it, something like me not working or me taking advantage of a situation or, you know, that worried him because he's seen it before. And that was something that was, you know, a kind of a test. Like, okay, is this, is this girl gonna, you know, do what I, I hope she doesn't do. And, and I didn't. So he was like, okay, I think I can trust Mm -hmm. that, you know, but the money is definitely a factor for him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he didn't want anybody to come in and take something that, he worked so hard for it. And right. I get it. I yeah. totally understand. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. There's really never an argument about finances though. We have a unique situation. We keep our finances separate. Okay. We don't have a bank account together. We have our separate And you bank didn't accounts. change your name. Nope. I did not yep. because of mm-hmm. my professional name is mm-hmm. my name. So, and I asked him, you know, out of respect, he is my husband. We're married. Yeah. Do you mind if I, if I keep my name or do, would you like me to change it or hyphenate it or whatever? And he said, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. So it's a name. Mm-hmm. Do you guys split the bills then? We have it set up. It's, I don't, he makes more than I do. So I wouldn't say we split it 50, 50, but I think we both carry our, our load for, you know, like he takes care of the mortgage and taxes. And then I take care of some of the bills and groceries. He does some groceries. I mean, we, you know, did you guys end up having a prenup? We did. We did. And it was not just for him, but it was also for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What was, what was it for both of you? You know, that was what you wanted to do. You know, the specifics of it? Yeah. Well, Oh, I don't, you know, why, why was it important? Why was it important for both of you? Basically to declare assets. God forbid if anything were mm-hmm. to happen and you can't predict the future. Right. I right. love this woman. Never. Dearly. We, and I 100% agree. Dearly. Yeah. But again. Anything can happen. 35 mm-hmm. <laughs> years at UPS. And then I've seen guys right before retirement. Mm-hmm. The yeah. wife's like, yeah. I'm not happy. I want a divorce. And there goes, you know you're giving away half of everything, everything that and, you work for. And, and I, it's, yeah. it's not an easy job. It's, yeah. it's always, you know, specific to their history or, mm-hmm. you know, I came in late. So he had already been working at UPS for a long time. I don't have, we don't have kids that I've been taking care of or, you know, I get it when, when you're in that kind of a situation and you've been, you know, taking care of the family while he's out working and and things don't work out and you get half. Of course, I think you're entitled to that. That's the law in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We didn't have that situation. Right. I came in late and for peace of mind for him and for me because he bought the house before we got married. Mm-hmm. Well, that I don't have any claim to that house. Mm-hmm. So in the prenup, I said, if, if, you know, things go south, I want at least a quarter of whatever we sell this house for. Mm-hmm. I put, you know, my work into this house. I've, you know, take care of this house. I yeah, clean this you house. I, you know, house to clean. so I, at least I knew if something were to go bad, I would have been covered. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm pretty sure we're not heading that direction. Yeah, it wasn't but. like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to, we're not getting divorced. Yeah, so no. I right. But I mean, that was, divorced, that was the sure. basis. So we were both covered on, on our concerns. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm sure in your industry too, in the music industry, there is a lot of divorce as well. Right. And so both of you guys are coming from an industry where it's just you're surrounded sure. by it. Yep. I mean, what is the divorce rate? Does anybody know? Is oh, it 50, it's, 60? No, it's higher. 45% right now. Correct. Oh, yeah. oh it's yeah. lower. For, I mean, that's, that's for first marriages. That's yeah. basically a coin a flip. Attorney. Nice. <laughs> that's right. a coin flip. Yeah. I mean, right. you're, you're putting everything on mm-hmm. a flip of a coin, you know? Yep. I mean, it's and, pretty risky. You know, in the same way, you know, we had a divorce attorney in, down here a couple of days ago, and he was saying that he wished people would prepare emotionally for divorce like they do for marriage and and make that legal piece not the emotional part that destroys people right and so you guys set that up nicely which i think is good and i it was i never looked at it like you know how dare he bring this up i i didn't look at it it is a partnership i don't mm-hmm. i don't care how much you love that person it doesn't right. matter this is a partnership right you, you, it's, it's, you know, almost like a business relationship in a way. Sure. 
And that's kind of how we approached it. We love each other. Trust me. There's, she has my back. I yeah, got there's back. Right. no yeah. if, ands, or buts about that. And I, I would have no issue signing a prenup. No, it's just when you if, are. If that take, makes safety. Right. If it's a, trust the situation yeah. presents mm-hmm. itself there, you know, I, I don't, I don't see it as a negative. Mm-hmm. Right. And, it, and I think people are like, oh, how dare you, you know, or, or they feel like, oh, you think I'm going to rip you off or, mm-hmm. you know, listen. It's when not you an easy are emotional, to ask, no, right? it's no, not an it easy. Can right. turn some right. people off. Right. I think you know. I mean, but I think that when divorce, like you were just saying, it's an emotional thing. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, your your emotions take over in that mind frame. Mm-hmm. It's hard to make good decisions when you're emotional, right? So, can you, can you guys talk about your history of dating and what things were like for you guys? Fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> Again, so on, has on our, no fun now. Oh no, it's okay. even it's trust me, it's amazing now. I think we talked about this on our first date. Like, yeah, we don't even want to get serious. You know, we don't have time for a relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, but we both were dating. I mean, yeah, plenty. I had just gotten out of a relationship, and the last thing I wanted to do was get into another one. You know, I had just kind of decided I was going to be single for a while and work on myself, you know, but I dated, I think I dated more than you dated. Uh, yeah. I tended to get in relationships. I'm did, more of a relationship guy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I connected with a girl a little bit, I'd say, oh, let's make it uh, exclusive. I didn't really like date around a lot. I wasn't my style. Did you ever live with anyone? I did. I live with two girls actually okay and again it didn't work they didn't pass the test uh (laughs) they did not yeah (laughs) so something wasn't there again that Mm -hmm. you know there were things that i like things that i didn't like and i mean i'm not saying i like a hundred percent of what she does but i mean we get along great you know there's no such thing as a perfect woman Um, or a perfect or a perfect man that's for sure so but again it just didn't feel right. And I think both of those girls that I live with also wanted children and I wasn't sold on children. Okay. Love kids, got a lot of nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Um, Do do you want to share your story of what happened to you when you were a younger man? About giving a child up for adoption? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. uh, So start from the beginning. How'd you find out you were going to be a dad? An old girlfriend of mine. Uh, so you were from, already broken up? Yeah, we kind of did the hot and cold, hot and cold, Got on it. again, off mm-hmm. again. I don't know if we were even in a relationship. We were just kind of, I don't know, hanging out, having a good time. and Fooling around. <laughs> I, again. Just was, casual. It was a casual. Sure. I mean, we were serious at one time mm-hmm. and and then we weren't serious. Then we were serious. It was hot and cold, hot and cold. How old were you at this time? 21. So, and I'm 48 now. So that was a long time ago. She ended up getting pregnant, told me. Um, I was like, oh boy, what are we going to do now? That's at that age. Do you get married? You know, I I wasn't as established as I am now with my career. Um, I was going to school, working a couple part-time jobs. That's a lot to have on your plate at that age. And didn't want to get married for the wrong reasons. So we both talked about adoption and that's the choice that we went with. Did you consider abortion at all? I did not. I'm Catholic. Mm -hmm. I'm not very religious, but again, it's just something. That's just, um, yeah, something you couldn't. uh, I have a lot of friends. Some of my closest friends are adopted and I just, it's just something I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Just wasn't in my cards. So she was agreeable to the adoption. uh, Yeah, absolutely. Nine months later. Christmas Day, we had a child and it was an amazing experience. Were you there for the birth? I was there for the birth. Yes. Amazing. Boy or girl? Boy. Did you hold him? I did. I have pictures of me holding him. And it was an open adoption through Catholic Charities. How did you guys choose the parents? We basically wrote down on paper what we were looking for in parents. And we had a caseworker through Catholic Charities and... Um, she brought us some files of families and we got to go over it. And we basically, she said, if you don't see anything you like, these families basically write a resume mm-hmm. 
And if you don't see anything you like in this, you know, what we've chosen for you, then we can look further. And we just decided to pick a family who uh, they were well-educated. They were most likely going to be able to give the child more than what we could at the time. So, and they were trying to have children and they couldn't. Mm. And they were getting near the age where it would be harder to adopt. They were upper thirties and we were told like after 40, 45, it's just harder to adopt. So we chose them. And from what I hear and what I've seen, he has a great life. Have you ever met him? I have not met him other than the day he was born. Mm -hmm. So, so he would be 28 this Christmas. I believe so. Wow. 1991. Yeah. You know, I know that we've, we've interviewed couples who have adopted and it's a very expensive thing. Does any of that money come to you guys or how does that flow in from, from your guys' perception? How does the money? Yeah. Do you guys get compensated at all or bills paid or? Uh, Well, yeah, there, that that was an issue too, as far as how we're going to, pay for this. Uh, I believe Catholic Charities picked up the expense. Now, whether they pay Catholic Charities or, although I did have a job with insurance, but she wasn't my wife, so I don't think she was covered. And again, our family would have helped if we needed help with that. But I believe they pay something, but they don't give us money directly. Okay. No, we just, you know, we were happy. I mean, it's an emotional thing. It's probably the most Mm -hmm. emotional thing that I've ever done in my life. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of tears that were shed. Mm -hmm. And I think about it often, you know, and I'm glad that he is successful from what I hear. And they were able to adopt another child. So he has a sister. And, you know, I look forward to the day that we might meet, you know, whether he finds me or I find him. Mm -hmm. You know, most of my friends have met their biological parents. So. So you have a desire to meet him then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 The way he's explained it to me, he doesn't want to reach out, you know, because he doesn't, he doesn't want to invade his privacy. He doesn't want to, you know, make him feel like he has to do this. Mm -hmm. He kind of wants him to do it on his own terms if he wants to, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't know what his feelings are. He mm -hmm. might have some negative feelings towards me. Like, why did you give me up? Or he could be thankful that, I don't know. Right, you know, so right. he might have his own life going on and doesn't want, I don't yeah, know. Wants nothing to do with it. I mean, sure, sure. and you don't want, you want to respect that, right? It, you know, so do you have any regrets? No, no regrets. I, I'm a hundred percent happy with the decision. Mm-hmm. That's you awesome. know, it's nice to know that part of me is out there. So I'm the only boy out of, uh, <laughs> yeah. How did your family <laughs> feel about this? Well, it was, oh, I, wow. I, I did not tell my parents. I did not live at home. So I was keeping a secret. But mm-hmm. again, I just didn't know how do, they would do react. Do they know now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, they... <laughs> I yeah. want to air this and be like, ah. Oh, no, no. They, no. They, they, they Yeah. I'm very open and honest with my parents now. <laughs> <laughs> but at that age... You how know, long after did they find out? The next day. Oh. He okay. came home and was like... I had to leave Christmas dinner. Oh. Because she, she, went, she, was, she, was in she went into labor. labor. And... Yeah, I, I got to go. Got to go. Where are you going? It's Christmas Eve. Did they know why you left? No, I told them it's a long story and now is not the time. <laughs> so I'll explain later. Got to go. And that was back in the day. There were I had no cell phones. It was pager. The pager's going off, 911. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. So yeah, so he was born on Christmas. And the next day I told my parents that they were grandparents. And it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you tell us? We could have helped you. And again, I was at the age where I didn't really want their help, felt I didn't need their help. I mean, I I know everything at that age, you know. (laughs) You still think you know everything. (laughs) What are you trying to say? (laughs) So it sounds like you would like another child. (laughs) You know, I don't know. As we look through, as, as as we look through social media and see all our friends with their beautiful children, and we're living vicariously through our friends. That's absolutely. For sure. yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it's like we think about like, hey, what is life going to be like in another 15, 20, 30 right. years? Yeah. yeah. And, and you're retiring very young. Yeah. I'm, I might still work. Start hopefully. a second life. Yeah. 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 You know, I, and 
don't get me wrong. UPS is a great company, but it's, you know. It's hard on the body. I, hard on the body. I'm basically there for the insurance. And, <laughs> and <laughs> me too. at no, 52, I could uh, retire with insurance. So I think we both said that if, you know, if we somehow came into more money than what we're doing now. I mean, we're, we're two people. We have, you know, very like comfortable dogs. lifestyle. We like, love our dogs. Fur babies. Um, yeah. But I mean, if something were to change and, and financially we got more money, I always said I would be open to adopting, mm, you know, even though we're older yeah. and I don't know how. Or fostering. Yeah, yeah, or fostering, you know, something. But if that need was still strong and, you know, once we got into a better place, not that we're in a bad place, but, you know, I think that was never questioned. Like we, we always said, if we, you know, had the means we would adopt because it worked out so well for him, you know? So you guys are together like four years before you get engaged, five years, How four years. Yeah. So what's yeah. the story with that? We didn't get to that yet. Yeah. You want to tell that? <laughs> oh, sure. I think her mother had something to do with it. Well, that. I think that, you know, you, you know, when you know, like we were saying, we just knew it was, we were, neither of us were going anywhere. And, you know, it starts to turn into playing house because, you know, we bought a house or he bought the house. We, we were, it was our house. Yeah, we were, you picked the house you know, out, honey, this we is We were our married, house. maybe not by paper, but we were definitely living like a married couple. So I was mm. like, listen, are you, you know, what, what are you, in, what do you want to do here? Are we going to just continue to keep doing this? Well, you're, you're 40 something here. You this know? is my girlfriend. This is my boyfriend. Right. right. And all your other friends are married. And changed to significant other as we, you know. Significant other, right. So. <laughs> Domestic partner. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of that today, you yeah. know. So. Again, it's just a piece of paper, really. I mean, it's. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you ever have a discussion about marriage then? Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time. Okay. I think about two. So, you know, we both went into it thinking we weren't going to get married. Neither of us wanted to get married. Okay. And then I would say about two years in, I was kind of like, you know what? I, now I kind of do because mm. I finally found somebody that I could see myself living right. with for the rest she, of my life. She was you passing know? a lot of the tests, if not all the tests. <laughs> all these tests. Hope, she, oh, was, he's she, was, test she was <laughs> he's a test giver. She, she was marriage material. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I think about two years in, we started the conversation about, you know, getting married. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I probably pressed him for about two years and it wasn't like a constant, you know, no. like, you know, I'm doing this, but I think towards the end, I was like, listen, you know, we've been talking about this for two years and you're still giving me the same answer of maybe this year, maybe 10 years from now. I don't know. The element of and surprise. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. Wait till she gives up you all know? hope. Right. You know, surprise. exactly. <laughs> Were there any moments? All my dreams. Were there any moments that you thought this is going to be the moment? No. Okay. Nope. Not at all. I, I, no, no. The moment of popping the question. Yeah. Right. No, that's a funny story too. Yeah. That, so we <laughs> eventually towards the end. There's a lot toward, of eye rolling yeah, going yeah, on I here. I know. Both uh, sides. Yeah. <laughs> he would like, you know, sucker me into looking at rings at like no, Sam's. No, no, no. no. I was just, I was. Like, oh, let's look at these. Well, anytime like, you're oh. walking past the jewelry store or it, it, you're at, whatever stores at the time we went to Sam's club. Now we're at Costco. Yeah, yeah. And if you've ever been in any of those warehouses, they have a pretty good sized jewelry department with some sparkly diamonds. Mm -hmm. And you know, anybody who wants to be engaged or married might be like, Hey, let's try on rings. And again, as a guy, you kind of want to know what style they like and, you know, kind of pick their brain a little bit. So I was all for it. You know, she finally found one that she really liked. Yes. I'm and not wearing it today. I'm wearing my other band, but yes. Yeah. And she said, oh, this is the one I really like it. And I was like, okay, maybe I should buy this. And I did buy it and I didn't tell her. But again, me being a little bit of a procrastinator, she's like, hey, when are you going to buy that ring? You want to continue? <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, it had been so long and we had been looking, you know, so obviously I knew he had an idea of getting engaged. Um, I didn't know when, but I, I knew at least he was thinking about it. And or I, mean, I was just it was, time. Yeah, it was. And I think that there was another ring that I had liked that was at Sam's Club. No, there was a, a wedding band online that oh, she yeah. liked on Blue Nile. And it was discontinued when I went to order it. The ring. It was a ring ring. I think it was just the band. 
and I was going to put a diamond on the band. Well, maybe, it was yeah. a very it was a setting. Yeah, it was right? a setting. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. a setting. It wasn't Correct. the band. It was the actual engagement ring setting. Right. Yes. But and then he waited too long, and it, it was, was discontinued. Gone. It was gone. And I was like, "Why? This is what it, this is what I mean. Like, why are you waiting to the last minute, and then it's not, you know?" So we found another one. How comes the Costco. blowtorch? Right, and then you know, tr- light totally. that fire. It's like, dude, why are you waiting? So then this, I saw this ring, and I loved it, and it was beautiful. And I'm like, "That's the one." I mean, it's perfect. I'm like, "You should get this one, even though you don't have to ask me right now, but you should have this one." Ready, ready for when you're ready. when you're ready. You know, don't wait. And, and she's like, like, I'm nah, going to call the no. store and tell them right now that you're coming no. to get it. So he tells me that he went to Lake Forest Costco and looked at rings there. And I'm like, you should just get the one that's, you know, at the Costco that we saw. I was shopping. It's and a big he's investment. like, no, no. <laughs> You know, I'm not ready. You had I'm already like, bought it, though. Yeah, he had already bought it. Okay. But I just, you, but he's Costco has a great this, return policy. Yeah, this so whole. <laughs> I wanted to see if they had anything a better. Return policy. <laughs> <laughs> so. There's a trend here. Yeah, yeah. There's, right. <laughs> I don't do any returns. She's she's in charge of all the returns. She's good like that. Okay. So I was like frustrated because, you know, I'm telling him just buy the ring. You can ask me whenever. Just this is the ring that I want. You've already lost one of the rings that I wanted. So get this one. And he's telling me he didn't get it. And he was looking at, at you know, Lake Forest and he's I'm like, I shopping. didn't see anything out there. And I'm waiting like, for a sale. I'm going to put, the, I'm going to put the ring on hold. And I told him, I'm like, I'm going to put the ring on hold because, you know, I don't want anybody else to take it. I don't want it to disappear. That's the one that I want. And he's like, don't call the store. I'm She's like, I'm going to ruin gonna. the surprise. And he goes, it's not there. I'm like, what do you mean? It's not there. And now I'm upset. She was crying. Yeah, I was, because I was I like, terrible. that's the one that I wanted. He goes, it's not there because I bought it. No, I said somebody or else somebody bought, bought it. somebody else bought it. Somebody else bought it. And that's when and you went into tears. I knew this was going to happen just like the last ring. Yeah. And then he said. And I'm, I said, but I know the guy who oh, bought it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know the guy who bought it. And she's like, now you're playing games. Yeah, I said, now you're just being And I stupid. said, no, I do know who bought it. It was me. Thank you for ruining the surprise. Yeah. I was like, surprise. oh, well, thank God. Well, but it wasn't a surprise because I knew that was the ring that I wanted. And That's then, not a then she was like, oh my God, you bought it. And she was just like, oh. So then I didn't know when he was going to ask, you know, and Well, of there's course, very few date nights, so. Right. And then he's like, we're going to go see a movie and then go out to dinner. And I'm like. Or go out, we had dinner first. And I then think you even asked me if I was bringing the ring. <laughs> I said, do you have the ring? And you, he's like, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> she wanted to see it. I'm like, you can't see. Well, she we can't. teach people how to treat us. Yes. <laughs> She's got a nudge and nudge. Uh-huh. <laughs> she buys her Christmas presents and wants to open them that day. I mean, she can't, she can't keep a surprise. I, I, yeah. I'm not a gift. I like gifts all throughout the year. I don't, I don't pick holidays to do it. If I want to buy you something, I buy it to that now. Yeah. I'm always, I've always been that way. So the, the dinner date wasn't the right atmosphere or the movie theater for the proposal. So we no. decided. Were, were to go. you thinking it was going to be, but then it well, turned out I had out it not. in my pocket. Okay. I, ha- I was ready. I'm like, you know what? It's time. Yeah. It's time. This girl and has it, just been putting up with a plan. He well, did. I mean, I yeah, he did. kind of had, I mean, I just like to wing it. I don't <laughs> like to look too far into it. It's sometimes easier that way. Plans can always go. Any yeah, but way. you had an idea of that you wanted to take me back to the Starbucks that we met. Well, I mean, that was like yeah. the last resort, you yeah. know, and actually that's where we, yeah, that's we where ended we up had. going back to yeah, where to we had our first resort. Plan, plan C. Right? Plan, C. Plan, C. Like plan C. The answer is C. Um, <laughs> it worked. I mean, we kind of just said, let's go have a coffee at Starbucks. I think she knew, you know. I did. And so, I mean, it's kind of cheesy that we... But the funny thing is, is, it's you know, I did, to be bad. how can that be cheesy? I did the traditional down on one knee and, and the girl behind the counter just started screaming. Oh, my God. They're getting engaged. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the fourth couple since I worked here to get engaged. Wow. At Starbucks. Really? Wow. Starbucks, Starbucks is yeah, a so, popular place so to meet. Who, they meet. So who knew? And <laughs> then we got two free coffees out of it. They, right. And I still actually have those coupons that the girl gave us. A mocha for, latte. Uh, yeah. yeah t- two free drinks. And I just kind of saved them because I didn't really want to use them. Uh-huh. You know? Sentimental. Yeah. Sentimental. And, cool. uh, Frame it, put it on the wall. I, they're in a cabinet somewhere. And like your 50th anniversary, you guys can go get that cup. There you go. Know. <laughs> Starbucks, Starbucks is still in uh, in business. But. Oh, they will be. How old will I be? 50 years. Uh, well, you'll be 90. 93? Yeah. 
no, 50 years from, oh, 50 from, years when, from when he got married. Got married. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 93. 94. He'll still be young. So that's good. Mm-hmm. That's right. I'll be in, I'll be 90. So. <laughs> This podcast brought to you by Starbucks Coffee. Yeah, we're giving not, a lot. not not we're not really. really. Thing anything, no, though. not not really. Costco, Starbucks. <laughs> right. We're giving everybody Look props. We'll have to beep, bleep everything out. <laughs> oh, you need to wear patches like the NASCAR drivers, right? So, how was planning the wedding, and how did you guys interact with each other's families? You know, our families get along great. They're yeah. very similar. I mean, we did most of the planning ourselves, and we tried to make it easy for both sides as far as location. Yep. I didn't have a dream of what I wanted for my wedding. I, I really, I guess, you know, when you get to this point and you're, I'm not a real involved person, like place and dress and it's very simple. Yeah. I don't, it That's was more like. about just having everybody together. And uh, do your you families know, both live in this area? My parents were in Milwaukee at the time. Okay. So, and then I have family that's in, in Chicago, South of Chicago and his family's in Arlington. Yeah. The majority of our family is local. And I mean, my sisters, everybody lives, you know, all over the map, but I just wanted something that would be fun. And, you know, yeah, this, the planning of the wedding wasn't stressful. We did argue over stupid stuff. And I think it was more about like, (laughs) you know, just the, the, the idea of forever, you know, especially for him, I think it just really kind of freaked him out. Is that true? I don't want to say it freaked me out, but I thought about it. I mean, this is pretty serious, you know, I mean, I don't want to say I'm a very serious person, but like I take this stuff seriously. Like this isn't like, Oh, I'm going to get married. If it doesn't work, I'm going to get divorced. I don't want to get divorced. What were some of the thoughts you had? Control. What are you trying to say? I you, <laughs> just saying you 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 know one of the things that we didn't argue about. She's a very strong woman, and I think she likes to be in charge a lot well, and good, make make the reason. decisions. I mean, but but so am I. I you know so it's hard. Like when you're older, you've been making all your decisions, and all of a sudden you're bringing somebody else sure. into the picture. Right. And you know it is fifty fifty. It's not, you know. It's give and take. And it always is. It totally is give and take. It's not 50-50. Sometimes it's 30-70. And, you think I I think you win more often. Not that it's winning or losing, but she. That's not, and that's not what I mean. I mean, I think sometimes you take more of a load than the other person and vice versa. I think in in certain situations, you rely on Mm -hmm. that person, you know, and, and it's when you're so used to going through the world by yourself. And you're not really relying on somebody else to take the load. You don't know how to transfer that. Mm-hmm. It it becomes a struggle. You're, be, you're because, becoming a team, so right? It's and like, it's there's no I in team. So you guys, you're talking about finding that balance point right. that finding works for the, both of you guys. And and I right. think for him, you know, it was hard to give up some of that control and have faith that I would not turn on him or you know, try to keep him from seeing his friends or, Mm -hmm. you know, if I had a simple request and it was like, oh, well, that's just the beginning of the end. You know, you're, you're asking me to change my whole life. You know, I think that was one of the issues for him, you know. I'm lucky with her in the entertainment business. Yeah, there's plenty of going out. There's plenty of drinking. (laughs) There's almost too much drinking, too much going out. Like I think some of my friends, I don't want to say they're jealous, but they're like, man, you get to go out and party all the time. And it's like, okay, well, Hey, you know, and it uh, works, you know, on my part, I think that in the relationships I had been in, in the past, there always is that worry of, you know, well, I am working and I'm doing, you know, late nights and I'm not home and he's, you know, out doing whatever, do I, can I trust him to not do anything that's going to, I know, rarely be, no, and he doesn't. go out when you're, I usually go home and go to bed early yeah. or I go to her gigs. But I mean, th- so early on that would definitely have been like in the planning stages of the wedding, when you start to look at it mm-hmm. in that long term, you know, those are the things that we fought about, you know, getting serious, like this is serious. This is it. This mm-hmm. is the end of the road. This is real. You and right. I for the rest of our this lives, you know, and we joke about it. And when somebody does something stupid or frustrating, we look to each other and we just go the rest of your life. Yeah. Like <laughs> this is it, you know, this is what you this signed what up for. You, this is what you asked for, for the rest of your life, you know, and I mean, we, la- we laugh a lot. How long did that period last? 
Oh, not a couple months. Okay. I mean, and it was right up, you know, I would say a month before the the actual wedding date. All those negotiating. Right. right. And I remember yes. we had one, you know, big blowout where he's like, I don't think I want to do this. I oh. I don't know if I, or I, 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 I don't, I don't know if that? I can do this, you know? And I said, that's fine, but you're going to call my mom and tell her that. <laughs> you're you're going to tell her why. You I don't know? even remember. Yeah, it was, it was such a trivial it was, it was argument. I don't stupid, even know what, it was just you know? so stupid, which most arguments are. And we don't have a lot of them, but uh, we work through it. And we're really good at working through any of our differences. And that's important. So you had a, quite a bit of fear to get over in order to get married. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I think. The funny thing is, after it finally was all said and done, <sighs> he was like, I don't know why we waited so long. <laughs> that was easy. That was, this is easy. There is a lot of stress involved with it, that. And I yeah. think it just is the unknown, you know, the fear of the unknown. Like, how is it going to be? You yeah, know, absolutely. what right. once that ring is or that, you know, the, the paper is signed and you are legally bound Everything you think everything's going to change. Yeah. You know, Nothing's changed. Nothing I mean, changed. if anything, it's better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're committed. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, we take our vows seriously. She wrote the vows, so I did. Do you know yeah. what they are? No, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't renewed them yet. Uh, but, yeah, uh, we're, I don't know. I think that's. I mean, we're still in the first yeah, inning. We're, we're still, only yeah, five years early. in. I mean, um, I don't want to say we're still on the honeymoon, but I remember it. It had to do with roots of a tree. So, you know, the, the longer we are one, the, the further our roots go and the deeper it gets. And it was deep, you know, yeah. I, we're, I shed we're, a tear. That sounds like nice. some awesome yeah. lyrics too. Uh, you oh, know, sure. yeah. I think a lot of your songs that you wrote. I don't in think the past, Breathe and Let Go has lyrics. Yet. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I haven't worked on those yet. Maybe that will be part of my, my uh, composing. Yes. There you go. But, you know, I think that it's important. That's how you start, you know constantly growing and changing and you know you have to changing do it for together. the better how much would you guys say you work on your marriage <laughs> I, I think we work on it every day but without knowing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. honestly you know? I mean I think it's pretty easy uh, yeah I mean you know when you have open lines of communication it there's nothing to work on because you're constantly talking to each other about communication what you know mm. if you have an issue and we both have our ways of a- approaching one another you know when there's something stressful or you know a topic that you know we know it's gonna mm-hmm. maybe create a little bit of a conflict if, if it's something that i'm unhappy with i usually just wait and just kind of shut down and not i i want to think about it and i know he's the same way he he doesn't if i start to approach him and and you know really badger him about something yeah, it's too much he just she's the same way. You know, he can't, and he doesn't want to talk about it. When mm-hmm. she's ready, she'll talk. Right. And it's the same thing for him. Not like, what's wrong, honey? What's wrong? Nope, Come on, I'm talk like, to me. Just, Don't you want to talk about it? No, no, no. So you just like approach each other, plant the seed and then kind of yeah, give each let, other space. Let, right. let how, how long, how long a time passes? I mean, it, every situation is different. So um, there was one time it took a couple of days. What? When I came home late that one night. And we didn't talk for two days. I don't even remember this. Yeah, the party. I went to the party and I took an Uber home really late. Oh, th- at Heather's house. Because I was going to go to this party and he told me he was going to be home. And I didn't go to the party because I'm like, well, he'll be home. And then two hours later, he came home. And I was like, why? I could have gone to that party. Like, I, why would, you know, and, and I would have taken you home. Why wouldn't you tell, you know, but he was drinking and he was having a good time, you know? Yeah. It just didn't, he didn't think about it. And yeah. So, I mean, but that type of argument is an in to me an insufficient argument. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not worth dragging out. I was frustrated. I didn't want to say anything that I would regret because it wasn't worth it. So I was waiting for her to talk about it and she wasn't talking and and I'm like, she wasn't ready. And then what happens is when I don't talk, then he gets mad because now I'm not talking. So he's not going to (laughs) talk. And I always tell him, you don't get, yeah. I'm like, you don't get to be angry because I'm angry. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't, you don't, 
get the right to do that. To one up you. No, right. you, yeah. you don't get that right. Mm -hmm. So who typically breaks the ice? I, I usually just. It's like it's over. So, so are we going to talk right. about this? That's your line. So we I, or gonna, there's nothing to talk, <laughs> about. talk about. It's about just this? like, I'm I'll like... tell you how I'm feeling. This is how I'm mad. This is why I'm frustrated. Don't do it again. And if you do, I'm going to remind you. And this it's is always just <laughs> such a little, like, sure. there's never like, I mean, it's silly stuff. But, but that's a good thing though. Oh, absolutely. It's only small th yeah. stuff, Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. Did yeah. you, did you agree that you kind of violated an agreement you guys had? So I did learn from that. And one was never give a time that you're going to be home. Just say, I will be in constant communication. Like, Hey, this is how it's going. Uh, you know, honey, what time are you going to be home? I don't know, but we will communicate. Don't say you're going to be home at 1130 and know you're going to be drinking. And next mm -hmm. thing you know, there's no Uber for 45 minutes and you're not going to get home. till two or whatever right. the time was. So yeah, you just, you know, you know, communication. You, you guys are saying it's a little thing, but it's actually a very big thing. Yeah. And if you would not tend to it, 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 it can, can be turn a deal into breaker. Oh, I, I learned. Into. I absolutely, right. like yeah. I told her, I said, I know better than to just give you. And sometimes I, I try to like, just give her a time. Like, Hey, this is what's going to happen. But I know better. He, I know better, you know, and this has been, he, it's Leo, when he starts to drink has a really good time. Mm -hmm. And it's not that he has a problem with drinking. It's that he you know, chatty. he just gets, yeah, he just gets <laughs> into the moment of what he's doing. I'm socializing. He's very um, social. He's a social butterfly. It's one of the wonderful things that I loved about him in the beginning. So I can't fault him for that because that's kind of what got me into him in the first place. Sure. However, he has a tendency to say, all right, I, you know, like this just happened yesterday. He went to drop the boat off. I'll be home by 5.30. I said, great, because I got to get in the shower and get to a gig. I'll try and be home <laughs> by 5.30. <laughs> Keyword try. I'll try. <laughs> it's a lot of work to wrap up he, the boat. He did not uh -huh. say try, but we'll, we'll just say, he said, I'll, I'll be home by 5.30. At, you know, 10 to 6, I'm like, are you wrapping it up? Are you coming? You know? I was in the car on and my way. And he has a tendency to yell and doesn't realize that he's yelling. And I always say like, okay, I'm not going to get yelled at. I'll see you when you get home. I'm like, bleep, and that's it. I'm not going to sit there and argue with him on the phone. Right. You know, it's not worth it. So he came home and the furnace guy came over and I jumped in the shower. End of story. Oh, that was, like that was, and the first was thing I said nothing, when I came home, you know, honey, I'm sorry that I started yelling. But I was getting worked up. She's like, are you coming home? We're under pressure. The guy's coming. I got to get in the shower. And and I'm like, okay, I got it. Yeah, he's I'm like, on my way. I'm, on my I'm like, all right, goodbye. I'm on my Leap. way. I'm not going to listen to this. You know. so, so the pro is, you know, when you are on a gig and he's coming to support you, you don't really have to worry about nope. him because he can socialize. Yep. He can entertain himself. You, you know, I, I know that when, when I would do the quartets, you know, there would be times I'd be worrying about Jean because she's out in the audience just by herself. But um, you don't have to worry about him. That's pro. But con is that when he, get, when has he gets has a good going, time and he gets going, then you can't honey, shut it let's off. go, honey, right. let's go. Yeah, the party's can't. over. Let's Five go. more minutes. Yeah. Honey, let's you, go. You can't shut it off. <laughs> Help me carry my equipment. Huh? What? <laughs> well, the funny thing is he'll come I up and he'll say, happen, yeah, was. he'll say, <laughs> she'll have the car all loaded. And yeah. I'll be like, he'll be do like, what do, you, what do you want me to help you with? I'm like, just help me carry the, carry the stuff out. Okay. And he's out talking in the corner and I'm like <laughs> sitting there. This. Yeah, we have. <laughs> and it's like, okay, he's mid, you know, conversation. I'm just going to start loading the car. Eventually he'll see me and come. No, he yeah. doesn't see me. He just sometimes, cries. sometimes I see her. Barely. Depending but, on mm -hmm. where the stage is. But that's okay. You know, he's not there to, I, I don't mm -hmm. go to work with him. I don't help him load packages. And, and I have you know. used that as an excuse. Right. Yeah. Like, so it's like, fine. You don't but come to work with me. When you ask me, what can I do to help you? And then I tell you, and then you don't do it. Well, well there's usually a delay. It's usually uh, nothing right now. I'll let you know. And I may not get the, let you know. Now, when you guys met, you went to Japan for a gig. Is that what you? I too was touring with Lieutenant Dan Band at the time. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. That was wonderful. And, but now you don't tour Outside nope. of the area, Not, the local area? I mean, no. I mean, Madison, that's as far as I've gone in the last couple of years. I mean, I okay. I did a fill-in gig at the Lieutenant Dan Band a couple of years ago, but yeah. What, my what is the travels. song that you, is that a song you wrote? A Letter Home? Letter Home. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Where can people find that? You can find that on iTunes. You can, yeah, download it. 
um, it's a song I wrote for the military. And what would they search? On Spotify too. And Spotify. Yeah. What would they it, search? It's A Letter Home by Gina Gonzalez. Awesome. With and the, you, it's actually on YouTube with Gary. So yeah, we've seen it. Um, yeah, awesome. there's a, there was an awesome documentary that Jonathan Flora directed about the Lieutenant Dan Band. It's called For the Common Good. And you can find that, I think, on Amazon. And um, they have a video, music video that they put on YouTube. And it's really beautiful. Yeah, it is. So, um, yeah, check it out. <laughs> it, it kind of, you know, is close to home for Jean because she served in, Thank you for your in service. the Army. Thank you for your Welcome. service. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we knew that. Yeah, I don't think I knew that. <laughs> Army? Maybe? Army, yeah. Okay. Army Reserves. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, when we were talking about getting married and the fear that you have to get over, like, like I've joined the army. I've bungee jumped, skydived. We just went to Great America yesterday. He I had to sit on half like of those. But walking down that aisle was I, I the went most on five terrifying thing. You did. You did good. <laughs> I saw your post. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't um, do yeah, the walking. Coasters yeah, anymore. No, you can't, yeah. It's just too much. I love it. I, I, I do too. I miss my, I love that Vertigo. feeling. Yeah. I, I have to work because okay. I have bad ear problems now, but yeah, I used to love all that stuff. So, so what did you guys learn as children from your parents about relationships and how is your relationship similar or different? I, I would say you stick it out. I mean, my, if Good my parents, and in yeah, I, my parents still married. have been through hell and or to hell and back. Um, they've lost two children. They've, you know, celebrated there's seven of us left. So, you know, seven marriages and grandbabies and the whole, you know, nine yards, but. Which number child are you? I am the last. Oh. I am the baby. You're the baby. I am the baby. But, you know, I think I learned from them. You, you, you deal with whatever it is and you, you stick by each other's side. You can hate that person for a small period of time. It's okay. You, it's never, you're never in love with them 24 seven. It doesn't happen. And if you think that it does, you're, you know, you're living in a fantasy. Delusional. Yeah, completely. <laughs> there are times where I'm just like, I don't even want to look at his face. Like, I, do, I don't, this, this you know, beautiful face. It, no, I don't. I'm, I, I just, it's like, you know what? I need a break from you. Sure. I need how to how often you. does that happen? Very yeah. little, but I'm okay. saying it does happen, <laughs> you, can, you know, where you can you, love them, but you, you don't can, have to right, like them. Right. All exactly. The time. And I, I think that people that's before her coffee, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or when you break my coffee maker, that's definitely, Ooh, a, oh. oh, the Keurig. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> a deal breaker. <laughs> I don't know it what is. happened. She came home and the Keurig uh, was broken. Or yeah. she woke up and it was broken. And you had to run out to Starbucks. I had, no, <laughs> I ran out and bought a new Keurig at Kohl's. I was like, I have a regular coffee maker. I'm like, maker. I don't want your spider-ridden coffee maker. It was a, a spider. a dead spider in there. Forget <laughs> it. Was it was a spider that crawled in there. How does that uh, happen? But I mean, <laughs> it was you know, warm you, in there. yeah, you go through these periods and I, and I always say it's like, you know, it's like the ocean, you know. You, you come together and you, and you go apart and it's just, that's, that's how it is in marriage and re any relationship, yeah. not even just marriage. Mm -hmm. It's like the rubber band. And you can feel when you're getting too far apart and it drives Right. You and you have to come yeah. back, you know, and it's or okay. Too close. Yeah. Or too mm -hmm. close. You know, you, you, you just, you know, it's okay to not be happy. It's okay because eventually it's going to come around and you're going to be happy again. If you work it out. If you work it out. Right. right. If you're willing to stick it out. Mm -hmm. Some people just give up. You know, they get mm -hmm. too far apart. And I'm like, in it eh, for the long haul. It's not worth the worth the work to try to get back together. We don't, we're different in that way. You mm -hmm. know, we look at it the same. There's there's a, a study that was done about if we're biologically designed to be monogamous. And they noticed that, you know, when it, when a couple first comes together, their brain is like on cocaine. It's oh, just yeah. So you can live on sunshine mm -hmm. and air and you don't even need to eat or sleep or nothing. And then that, that period, there's a shift that happens around four years. And they think that that is because if a child was conceived, because I think historically human beings would be, if you have sex, there's a potential for birth. That was marriage, like right. way before we had much more society. So at, at four years, they, they would say a person that would have to raise a child on their own, a four-year-old, living in the land would have a better chance of that baby surviving than younger than four. Yeah. And then there was another one that happened at 10 years. And their belief about that was, this is a person who is like going into puberty there. They'll be an adult. They can continue on the genetics, you right. know, whatever. 
Um, but then they found at 25 years, the brain chemistry is like it was even better than when you first got together. Yeah. And we're going on 21 years and we're finding that, you know, it's, and, and, and you have, you have something because you've lived in it together that no one else has shared in that with you. And, and it's so, you know, like, I don't know if you guys, you know, when you're alone and you get kind of get bored, we're almost never alone, but we get bored together. We're like, Oh, we got to go be with people or something like that. Yeah. So all that stuff. Yeah. It's worth hanging in there. I, I, and I, I think his folks are the same. I mean, your parents, man, they just, they just celebrated 50 years. Yeah. Oh, or both of our parents awesome. are, are 50 yes. years. F oh, that's a yeah. weird yep. coincidence. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's a coincidence at all. Do, uh, did you notice any of those shifts in your parents? Like as they're like in those stages of life where their kids are gone and they have each other and they've been through, you know, the war in essence together. I, I mean, my parents, there's such a huge gap as far as the generational. Yeah. So I think their situation might be a little bit different um, because my mom is in a different period of her life than my dad is. Mm -hmm. So there's some, you know, conflict there because she's still living and he's like content to just sit around and not really do much, you yeah. know? And she, and she's, she's, a, she's always been a social person and she likes to be, you know, with family and mm -hmm. her friends. And, you know, my dad wasn't really, I, I don't, I don't, wouldn't call him a social person, he had a few friends, you know, like, like his doctor friends and stuff, but I mean, he was never really a huge social person and it's gotten worse as he's gotten older. And, you know, I don't know what happens when you're, you know, as you age and your brain chemistry changes, um, he's still very active. I mean, he's cuts the grass and, you know, does all this stuff outside and, you know, he's in great health, but when it comes to social interaction, it's like pulling teeth to try to get him to go out. You know, he doesn't really want to, but then when he's out, He's happy to be out. Like you at, your, know. at your gig. Yeah. My mom, my ago. sister came out into town and they came out for dinner and they came to a gig and it's very loud. And we gave my dad some earplugs. As soon as he had the earplugs, he was happy. It was fine. It was great. That's mm -hmm. great. He was enjoying it. You know, they just went and had a party at my cousin's house for, for I think it was somebody's birthday. You know, they, it's just, once he's out, he's good, but it's the, I don't know the, if it's a lot of work for him because he's tired or, you know, what, whatever, what have you. But my mom is still in the, I want to be out and yeah. enjoying my life right. phase. Yeah. So there's that can create some strife, yeah. but again, mm -hmm. neither of them are going anywhere. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, they know what they signed up for. They're sticking, you know, sticking together. And I think that's where I've learned, like, you can really hate, somebody and still love them. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like you could really be frustrated and be sure. like, I, I don't even know how long I can do this, but I'm going to do it. You know, do you ever hate her? Never. <laughs> well, I, I, I hate. dislike. That's a pretty strong word. Yeah, hate. No, I, I don't uh, mean yeah, hate, but I mean, I get frustrated you know, at times. Sure. I mean, I, I can count on one hand how many times I've like really been upset, but, and it's usually it again. Yeah. Well, the person that can hurt you the most is the person sitting next to you. Right. Yeah. In the whole world. So, yeah. you know, do we ever not like each other? Uh, never. I mean, we are perfect. Like hundred <laughs> percent. No fighting ever. It, ever. it is amazing when you, when you don't communicate and you get stuck in your head, how you could really turn the other person into a monster because mm -hmm. you're in pain. And then as soon as you actually have a conversation, you're like, oh yeah, I remember why I love you again. Uh, exactly. Exactly. It, this it's, by far, she is the easiest girl I've ever been with as far as like getting along fighting there's very little roller coaster ups and downs I mean it's pretty even keel I think you know I tend to get emotional and then I try to take a step back and look at it from a non-emotional perspective mm. I I am my my initial reaction is always an emotional one and that's just because I'm an emotional person period I'm yeah, an artist absolutely mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and female so I've my, learned right, that and about her so it takes time to learn that. right so my first initial reaction is always emotional and that's when I tend to shut down and do you ever and, write a song during that oh yeah oh cool. yeah oh yeah um but I don't stay in that place very long. Mm -hmm. So when I was younger, it was easier to write because, you know, you had so many ups and downs with different people yeah. and you were hurt so bad, you know, by a relationship 
that you can was, stay in it oh, longer. Oh, I can stay in there and write right. about it and, you know. I, I don't can't, give her enough it's material. It's so hard <laughs> because it doesn't last fight, very long. Leah. Seriously, Blessings it's like, like right. It's me. like, man, I haven't really written about anything bad because I don't stay in that spot. You well, know, even if you though ever it need happens, some material, we'll come over and just instigate a fight. For yeah, you guys. right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think then then once I'm over the emotional part of it, because he's not, he, he's a guy. He, they don't. They just answer whatever it is. What? Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Oh, amazing. So amazing. <laughs> you know, okay. so it's up to us, right. you know, to take a step back and say, okay, like, how did I react to this? Why did I react this way? All right, we need to have a conversation about this, you know? And I mean, you know, our brains are designed differently. Yeah. They, they work very differently. Yeah. They work right. very different. Women use both hemispheres of the brain simultaneously. Whoa. Yeah. We have to, we're one track minded. I we have to go from one that. hemisphere yes. to the other. Isn't that crazy? Well, you know, if you think about it, if you're walking down the street and you see a guy up there or something, you're probably just going to keep walking. If it's us, we're crossing the street. Yeah. And we're we're watching and we're like, okay, because you have to. That, we can't. Somebody just posted something about this on Facebook mm -hmm. that, you know, when you like, like when you leave a store and walk to your car, what do you do? Go to my car. Okay, so when we leave a store and walk to our car, we look around who's around, you know, we watch our surroundings. Checking for threats. Checking for threats. Right. Is there well, anyone in the car? Is, right. Is there anyone under the car? Yeah. You know, I've yeah. heard about people getting their Achilles tendons mm -hmm. sliced. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but this is how we think. And women's brains have to think like that, right? So if it's, you think about a guy way back in the day, he's part of a hunt, right? And they have to be single-minded to, you know, go for that kill. Laser and women focus. are like, where's the kids? Is there a lion? I got to stir the, the stew. Right. And what are the other ladies doing? Yeah. Is there, you know? Yep. Yeah. Right. It's the way that it goes. I agree with yeah. that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but we are definitely more emotional re in reaction, you know? Absolutely. So. And, and I've found you're getting into some of this stuff being 44. Yes. I'm 51 that your emotions get even more intense in both directions. Yes. Oh, and boy. Highs and lows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, how's that working? It's a hormonal. It's a process. <laughs> it, is a know, process. it is a process. <laughs> well, I'll. Uh... David Dida, who wrote the book, uh, The Way of the Superior Man, he talks about women or the feminine energy in a relationship being like this wind that's just fluid and, you know, dynamic and energetic and the masculine energy in a relationship is like a tree trunk. It's just solid, consistent, right? And so when we go through these phases in a relationship, it can, you know, kind of be like a tornado ripping a tree out of the, the ground from time to time. Oh, right? and, interesting. And the tree needs to <laughs> we, be ripped out. We might out. be back yeah. here for some more. <laughs> and the tree needs it, you know. I think that, right. that you've grown as a person tremendously since I've been more, let's just say, sensitive. Sensitive is a good word. And I think that they have to be open to understanding yeah. that. I think it's, you know, it's not anything that we can easily control because it's hormonal and it's, mm -hmm. it's, we, I try to be conscious of it. Yeah. You know, like I know when I'm getting like, you know, I know. Maybe I won't retire just yet. <laughs> Maybe I'll stick it out a couple more years. It, but it, it helps to have a pup in your basement. Oh, that does. Uh, yeah. Happen. And yeah. karaoke. And, and listen, and we've got karaoke. golden tea and two pinballs. So we're, go. we're, we're, yeah. Or we got don't a place have a to bar. retreat. We do have a refrigerator <laughs> yeah. and it's not stocked right now. No, not yet. But you know, there's a saying that says PMSing women don't speak with a forked tongue. They speak with a sharp tongue. Yeah. So it really is truth coming out. That's a, a Christian Northrop quote. Yeah. And she's got some great material on the changes of ladies. Yeah, and, in and stage it, of it is what it is. And there's no, there's no changing it for us, you know. So just imagine that fire and add wind to that. That's what it'll be like. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, we're already there. I think they call it a, f yeah, a fire nato. <laughs> fire nato. As long as it's not a shark nato. <laughs> uh, so... Tell me what the other person does that makes you feel loved. Just acknowledgement of that I'm doing a good job. That makes me feel loved. I know that sounds ridiculous, but, you know, I feel like he works hard Monday through Friday. He's, you know, he is the breadwinner. He is the caretaker. You know, he, he is 
my support system. I could not do what I do without him. There's no way I would have the life that I have and, and be doing this on my own. And I'm so thankful for that. But when he actually like says, you know, man, you're doing a great job or you're killing it or, you know, you did oh, it was a great show or what that it's like validation. It mm -hmm. makes me feel like sure I'm doing the right thing, you know, and I'm, I'm part of the team and I'm, you know, it's, it, that makes me feel loved. Yeah. Everybody appreciates a compliment or a pat on the back, you know, so to speak. Yeah. Like Monday is her day to clean the house. Like every Monday she cleans the house. That's so my, it's simple yeah. for me to come into the house and say, the house looks amazing. Great job. But sometimes I'm like so used to the house being clean. I kind of like come in and, yeah. and she's like, I clean today. I'm like, oh yeah, I meant to tell you it looks great. Yeah. So, but yeah, compliment. again, she just likes the, but, I mean, I give her compliments in a lot of different he areas. Does. Like great yeah. show. And what does she do that makes you feel loved? <sighs> just support me in what I do and put up with my complaining about work every once thing. in a while and which I try not to do too much. I mean, again, we support each other, you know, she's a good woman, you know, she makes me feel good. I don't know. Gina and Leah, we want to thank you so much for being part of the podcast today. You guys are an awesome couple. This is an honor for both of us. Oh, please. Thank you for having <laughs> thanks us. Thanks for having us. And, I can't uh, wait to come back. It's an amazing basement you guys have. And <laughs> thank thanks you. for sharing your wisdom and knowledge with us. Absolutely. Let people know how they can hire you and what you would be hired for. I do uh, all sorts of parties, private events, corporate events. You know, I try to work Wednesday through Saturday, some Sundays. And you can offer everything from solo musician to a band. A full band, four piece band. And yeah, I do just about everything. And so. the website? Right. The website is Gina Gonzalez. So that's G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z -E with a Z dot com. So we get wounded through relationship and we heal through relationship and human beings have been sharing stories since the beginning of time. And we hope that you guys coming here, sharing your story has enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners. Awesome. For all of you listening, you guys are going to have a treat because you're going to hear Gina with the outro with her music and her voiceover. If you have any questions or topic suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment or look us up online at couplesynergy.com. Until next time, synergize your light, synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Kedkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Kedkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.